All right, day three is here, man. Just crisp, nice morning here in Georgia. Sunny but cold. Good and brisk, I love it. Yeah, what do you yeah. think is gonna happen here, man? I don't know, man. I got some crazy stuff set up for today. I think we're doing a little shoot, move, communicate stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It looks like some team shooting, some combat course. I love this stuff. This is totally, yeah. This, I'm, I, I, it brings back the old days for me. That's all. All right, I hear you getting juiced over here for <laughs> yeah. small unit tactics, love it. Yes, I love it. So hey, you know what? If you mess up, you mess up right here. And messing up is okay, but doing it right here, not in the real world, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we train. So I don't know, they didn't tell us what we're gonna do. I'm just guessing yep. that we're gonna do this, but we're about to find out. And then we'll go to the kill house. The kill house. Put everything that we've sat here and cultivated the last two days, put yep. everything together, man. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good job. Yeah, it's gonna be force on force, guys. So we're gonna do those gel guns and just do some CQB stuff that we learned here and hopefully to win nice. some stuff. Oh, that felt good. The what? What's going on, dudes? Yeah, not much. Uh, Neil McLean with McLean Corps, Active Crisis, one of the founders over here. Neil, I don't know, we were just guessing what we're gonna do here today. You wanna enlighten us a little bit? Maybe a little bit hint? Yeah, you probably guessed right. Uh, we got a couple of targets down here and we got barricades set up. Essentially, what we're gonna simulate is uh, breaking contact on the first run. If you're driving a vehicle, vehicle goes down hard, you got a contact front, you gotta get the hell out of that vehicle. The way you win the gunfight is just letting lead. So oh, that, that's even way better than I thought. <laughs> this is awesome, dude. Let's do so it. Sling and lead, you're moving when your, butt, when your buddy's shooting. As soon as you get to a position where you have cover, you start slinging lead. That's laying, keeping their heads down. Your buddy can now move. You hear him shooting, and you know he's set. You don't even yep. have to say it. You start moving. Look for the next piece of cover. Get there, start slinging lead, keeping their heads down. And just keep downing until you find an out and get the hell out of there. Dude, I love this. Loving it. All right, well, let's get to it. Let's do it. Today, we're going to be working on bounding. We got some ammo to burn, and this is another little sort of outside the house skill that can kind of help you get to, get you out of trouble, okay? So we're gonna be bounding, we're gonna be breaking away. All right, so bounding. All right, let's talk about it a little bit. The reason why we bound is because you have to get, you have to create distance to start creating tactics, all right? so. You need to be, create distance so you can get back, you can start to flank, you can just get out of there completely, get back to a structure, get back to a bigger gun, get back to more ammo, get back to more guys, okay? So you just have to get out of this situation. All right, guys, in this section, we're gonna talk about bounding, basically retreating from an active gunfight, but tactically, shoot, move, communicate style. So one person sends fresh and fire, the other person runs back to a better, uh, tactical position, get position of cover, start sending expression of fire, and the other guy work, uh, runs back. And then we just leapfrog back to a better position or completely retreat from the situation. The whole mindset is here to keep the enemy's head down as the other person is uh, retreating back to a better position. That's it, so let's see how it goes. With bounding, shooting, you have to shoot in, uh, so what is it? Shooting or moving without shooting is suicide, okay? So you have to be, your buddy has to be shooting. Somebody has to be shooting while you're moving, okay? While you're moving, you can do a lot of things, okay? You can do your reload, you can look be looking for other stuff, but don't take too much time because the, the real game here is ammo conservation, all right? So if I'm up here and we take contact, I'm gonna be coming back to this, say that barricade, or if I'm on that side, I'm going to that barricade, or I'm trying to get to another piece of cover or something, then I want lead going down range to keep heads down, all right? So you just constantly be shooting to get out of there, all right? So that's the idea behind it. So the ammo conservation thing is cadence of fire, all right? So if you have a Glock and you have 19 rounds or 17 rounds or 15 rounds, depending on what gun you have, it doesn't really matter. You have to understand you have that amount of ammo and you have to time that with your buddy. You have to understand what your buddy has for ammo too, okay? So you, you don't want to both be dry reloading at the same time, okay? That's like, that's when it gets really bad. Okay. Hey, Neil. can we uh, talk about that one? I could tell when you're going dry, if you're on the rifle. Yeah. You're about to go dry, because I've done like maybe 15, 20 rounds. You know, I'm like, da 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 and he's still moving there. And I know I don't have that many more rounds left, so I'm gonna slow down my fire. Right? So I'm going to ting, ting, and make it more accurate. So he can, like, let's say he tripped or something. He's going to take longer to get there. I'm not just going to keep going a high rate of fire and then do a reload while he didn't even make it to the, uh, the other side. And then for him, like, let's say we're both behind uh, cover. 
and he's shooting pretty quick and I'm going like tink, tink, tink. He knows I'm about to go down uh, with my mag um, because my slow, steady rate of fire. And because we do have voice communications, but sometimes you can't hear that. It's, it's very similar to like uh, uh, automatic weapons. You know, you can tell when a uh, squad automatic weapon's going down because instead of like a five or six round burst, you're doing like a two round burst. And that tells the other machine gunner, oh sh if I need to reload, I better do it now because he's about to go dry. So he could go, you know, have your uh, rounds. So I'm going tink, 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 I go dry, I come back, and then he's gonna pick up the rate of fire, right? And just like I said, you don't wanna end up like you both go down at the same time. All right, you guys good? Push, push back a little bit. Kind of hard to pick your head up in that, something like that, right? Yeah. Cool. That's Pretty cool. straightforward. Yes, sir. Get my rifle. Down range. Down range. Range is cold. It's so stuck, I can't get the magazine out. Order, order it. <clears throat> order it. If you're having a malfunction, if you're that close to a target, go straight to your pistol, right? So, boom, oh crap, we gotta get out of here. And then, or if he's shooting, just turn around and run and figure out behind cover, right? Those are, your, those are two pretty good options. Yep. All right, guys, in this section, what we're going to talk about is if your rifle goes down when you're bounding, getting to a better position, or even pretty much any situation where you're involved in an active gunfight, switching to your pistol is always faster. That's what the uh, Call of Duty taught us, right? But even these uh, SEALs, Navy SEAL uh, friends, told us the same thing. So this is a great example. I had a very catastrophic malfunction on my rifle, and I was so focused on trying to fix that rifle as my partner is slowly running out of ammo from his position. So. The SEAL, uh, one of the instructors told me to switch to your pistol, which I should have known, but you know, sometimes you get that tunnel vision stuff, and I switched to my pistol, helped my partner basically move to a better position. Go ahead, what was your question? Ask that you first. Toting your pistol, is this something where you just leave your gun behind, or because you're moving so fast, you always break? <laughs> yeah, that's what the sling's for, because you want to get that thing back up. If you don't have a sling, the cling for trademark TN. <laughs> <laughs> Got some in the truck. Your rifle's <laughs> down, you're using your pistol, you go to run. You've got to holster your pistol and get your barrel up in the air, or do you run? So the, the reason why you would uh, want to fix your rifle, you want to get your rifle back up and running, so the perfect time is why you're moving this way. So before you holster your pistol and get your, whatever you gotta do, clear your uh, magazine, your bolt, whatever you gotta do to get up and running. You're asking your rifle barrel up. Or what I'm saying is, I've got only my pistol. It's down, mm -hmm. and I go to move. Yeah, you sling your rifle and and, and run with your rifle slung down. Uh, 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 but y'all have always said we're supposed to be barrel. Yeah, when you have it, when you have it, like you're, you're carrying a gun, 
when you're actually actively using the gun, it's the difference between it being slung okay, so and it when being it's like, slung, so I just run with my pistol. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, your pistol, okay, your pistol is going like this. It's the same, same thing. Okay. Yes. All right. Question. Yeah. Let's assume I'm, I'm there shooting behind the barricade. Yeah. My partner is back here. Okay. I'm waiting for him to start shooting so I can move. Yeah. But I realized, like in my case, it's a pistol shot. I heard him shooting his pistol, so I didn't move. Do I still move yeah, when yeah. he's shooting it's a pistol? Or do I reload behind the barricade you and start shooting so he can get his gun up? So here's what the pistol's telling you. His pist the pistol fire you're hearing is means his, his rifle's Yes. Right? So <clears throat> you don't want to spend more time. That means he's like, hey, you need this is the only way I can get you out of there. Oh, okay. And so use that time in between to reload. To move. And to move. reload and move. Yes. Because over there, I heard him shoot his pistol. So I said, I should wait for him to fix his gun. So I was waiting. So I should have moved. It could be permanently fixed, broken. Yeah. Okay. So you don't so know. You don't know. He, he, whatever, whatever yeah. gunshot you hear, you move. He's he, trying to get. He's, he could be out of ammo too. Yeah, he could be out of ammo. You could be sitting there for a long time. So if there's a gunfire yeah. coming on, yeah. going on, you move. Hopefully you're not hearing their gunshot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you're listening to your buddy's what? gunshots. Hopefully you're not hearing their gunshot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? <laughs> Let's get a new group. Well, going hot. Going hot, boys. Contact front! He's far! He's far! He's far! Downrange! Downrange! <laughs> This one, we're gonna reconsolidate behind the same piece of cover. And how we're gonna do that is the use of something called last mile caps, which is such a critical, it's such a critical phrase, okay? All right guys, in this section, what we're gonna talk about last man command. So when you're bounding, going backwards, basically to a better position or retreat for an exfil or whatever, you always wanna let the person who's covering you and you're running back, let the person know if you're the last person that you are the last person. So that person can continue to spray and know that there is no friendly, none of his buddies or brothers are downrange that he has to continue to cover so he can move. At the same time, if you don't say that and you keep running, and the person continues to shoot, that person may find himself alone, pretty much abandoned by their uh, friends. And this has actually happened in Battlefield, which Jim Foreman was telling us about his experience once. So it's very important to tap the person, yell at him, last man so he knows. So if Neil's shooting over here or on that barricade <coughs> and we're kind of bounding back, we're bounding, right? That's kind of fine. But as we get closer and it gets darker and we're getting closer to each other, we need to make sure that we know when all of our guys are past the last man firing or the last guy that should be firing when the last, when the last man passes him because he's holding everything down, right? So the last man tap is if you are the last guy past the firing line, you need to go by and literally scream the guy's name or the guy's face, last man, and then run by. And that gives him permission to open up and just lay it down, okay? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna work on that stand down.
That was, I think, f***ing really good. <laughs> no, he had lots of problems. That's yeah, fucking really I good. I can tell. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got Neil McLean from McLean Corpse Slings here with us. I've got Ryan, obviously, okay. from Classic Firearms. And we're gonna talk about slings here. It is such a big deal. Sling is essentially a holster for your rifle. And we've had some issues, me and Ryan, multiple issues. Ryan, you wanna talk about your issue first? What happened to you? Yeah, so I had a clear malfunction. I've got the ESD sling. Um, it's a thinner sling that a lot of people run. I think that it's more common to run this thin style. It's simple, it's cheaper than a lot of other slings out there. They run it, uh, but when I was shooting it earlier today, I had the QD sling on the back like section of the lower receiver back here. A lot of people like running it that way because it's just less to manage. It's more, I guess, maneuverable. Switching in that, shoulders and stuff, mm, yeah. In that situation. However, when I was running it like this and Neil and I were doing malfunctions, he was uh, inducing malfunctions when I was doing this drill when we were bounding. Um, accidentally had an issue where I was grabbing the charging handle and this sling, the rifle kind of rolled over and the sling got caught underneath the charging handle, similar to this, I'm trying to replicate it. And then at that point, trying to clear this, it was just easier for me to transition to a pistol by far. But even then, after I was bounding and then trying to clear this malfunction, it was a dead gun uh, because I ultimately had to sit there and really work on it. Um, and having a different kind of system, either even just simply QD going back here would have helped. But then ultimately having a thicker sling would have probably helped it not get caught underneath there. Yeah. Sure. So in, in a nutshell, basically, in a very stressful situation, life in that situation, his sling put a mm -hmm. very well-functioning gun out of fight. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, that was really bad. Exactly. And, and for me, uh, I had the uh, two-point the Magpul sling. And uh, in this case, I've got, obviously, McLean's uh, sling. And every time I do a reload, which we have it on camera, I'm pretty sure we'll put it on the screen, the sling would get in the Magwell area, and it would prevent me to do uh, effective reloads, let's just say. And today, when I was running that two-point sling again, I really had a hard time bringing the gun all the way to high port for safety when you're running around maneuvering. It just caught up to my gear. And it was just really very uncomfortable. I had to kind of fight uh, with my sling multiple times. And that's not good. And obviously, we want to make that mistake here, not in real life. So that's, this is where we learn, a learning environment. So then I talked to Neil. I was like, hey, this is what's going on. In fact, he was next to me. And he's like, well, you got to try my sling, which I really wanted to. And this is his sling, and it feels absolutely incredible. Single point, you can just maneuver this all over. It feels really good. And then you can just, if you wanted to, just do an admin, just let it hang. You can just bring this up here. I can try to show it to the camera as best as I can right here. Just like that, and it is right here. You can tighten it up, loosen it up. It's up to you. And if you wanted to go fight, all you got to do is just pull, and you're good to go. And this is it, man. So you want to talk about this? Yeah, just, just real quickly, I'll cover a few yeah. things. So like the benefits, like he was talking about with the single point sling, is you got maximum mobility with your rifle. So I can easily maneuver my gun around my body in a firefight. Yeah. Big problems with them is when I'm hands-free going to my pistol, it's like smacking me in the nuts. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Like that, That's not so cool about a single point sling. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, in an actual gunfight, I don't care. I'm, I'm getting it out of the way, I'm getting my pistol up because I need to start sling, keep slinging rounds downrange. So in that case, I don't care, I'm gonna work with it. But when I wanna go into an admin mode with a single point, I can't actually do that. If I wanna hang out all day long, I've gotta always maintain positive control of my gun. This sling, I've got a, essentially a built-in retention system where I can take and clip it in. Mm -hmm. And now I've got an admin mode and I can take up slack as well, make it real tight to my body. So I can even run like an obstacle course if I wanted to. I could throw it in my back and run an back. obstacle course, go hands on a prisoner, whatever I need to. The cool thing about it though is when I need it, it's extremely fast to get it back out into single point mode. I just, on the quick release, I pull forward to release the tension, I pull backward to release from the gun, 
instantly in single point. Wow. So I'm not like transitioning from like two to one or anything like that. I'm just instantly back into the firefight. Yeah, this is this is fantastic. And I'm gonna start running this, see how this feels, but so far it's pretty good. And for people at home, would you call this a, a do-all sling? <laughs> no, I, I mean, we call it the dynamic retention sling. Mm -hmm. So it's a single point sling with a retention system built into it that's very dynamic and fast for, you know, getting back into the firefight, mm -hmm. transitioning from retained to not retained. And, and Neil has been in the field for many, many years. He knows what he's doing. He's tested all of them and he found something to be missing. You know, you got two points, obviously it's got a place, yep. very important. You got single points, it's got its pros and cons, just like two points. And you came up with something that is single point, but also kind of two point for admin uh, hang. So exactly. you kind of found that middle, that problem area that nobody had a solution to and you kind of solve that. I wouldn't say that there was the solution. I just, I, I took another design that I saw that I really liked. Yeah. Uh, it was very similar to this and I adjusted it to my liking. So uh, advanced gunslinger armament designed a sling very similar to this. Great yeah. sling as well. Uh, just a few things I didn't like about it. So I modified ours to be able to do everything I needed in one touch point versus two. So I can release. And, gotcha. Uh, and also I'm not fighting with a QD. Trying to find that at night was like difficult for me. So made something easier to find, easier to work with with gloves, easier to find at yeah. night, work with at night, that kind of stuff. Really good, man. Absolutely. You have anything else to add? The thickness of it yeah. uh, compared to, I mean, let's just do a comparison real quick. Yeah, yeah one inch yeah. versus inch and a half makes it a lot more comfortable as well. You want it? There you go. Yeah, you just kind of do a comparison on camera. I mean, the thickness yeah. of it would have definitely helped in situations like mine. Yeah, it's yeah. helped yeah. the functions and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Exactly. So overall, it, it seems to be a very promising, I haven't run it, obviously, but it feels already very good. A lot better than two sling that I was just running in the last couple of days. Seems fantastic. I say that we just keep running this, see how it yeah. feels. But uh, definitely check him out, guys. McLean Corpse on Instagram and obviously Neil McLean. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who he is, just Google him. Yeah, <laughs> That's all. And, know uh, who he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go get some more gunfights. Sounds good, man. Let's go. All right, guys, in this section, what we're going to focus on, the fundamentals. That is very, very important. If you want to really go to an advanced level, you have to perfect, master the fundamentals. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the A zone right about five yards, and we have a little black pasty, and we're trying to get all the rounds onto that pasty. So we want to have that one-inch grip. So, and your own time too. So take your time, apply the fundamentals, all seven fundamentals of pistol shooting. Then we slowly go back, but there is a punishment. If you do get out of that A zone, you have to do push-ups. So after we do those fundamentals, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our, what we learned in the fundamentals class into some fun steel challenge with friends. And there is a punishment there too. So let's check it out. The first drill. Everything in the A zone like we just did. We're gonna do three rounds in the A zone at five yards, okay? Take your time as much as you need. If you miss, a miss is 10 push-ups. okay? So take your time, make it count. Five rounds, A three, zone, three, light blue. Three. Three rounds. Three, three rounds. Three <clears throat> rounds in the A zone. Nice and easy. If you can get them in the pasty, get them in the pasty, right? As, as much time as you need. Once you're done with your three rounds, holster, and we'll all move back together. Nice. What do you think of that? Holster up, down range. Down range. Yeah, one minute, kind of yoke some push-ups. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> All right, back to the, Seven. let's go to the 10. Right here. <clears throat> Look at that form. That's what I'm talking about, get strong. <sighs> Sweet. <laughs> All right, three rounds, A zone, 10 yards, on you. <clears throat> nice, easy trigger squeeze, take your time. Then I can shoot there or I can shoot there. Can you co-witness? I'm gonna aim low. You want me to shoot there? Yeah, just do one shot before you shot this. Just one shot. Getting in how you need to. Jason, you think you got this? We'll see. We'll see. I'm confident in whatever happens. <laughs>
15 yard line, A zone, three shots. <coughs> nice and easy. Make sure we're, uh, we're all on line. Take your time. Line breaker. What happened? Line breaker. I just did at the last minute. <laughs> I called my. Sh I, I could see it I, as soon as it happened. We are going to 20 yards. That's that's pretty good. It's a pretty long pistol shot, especially into the A zone. Okay. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start working our way back in. And the new target is in the light blue on the head, right? There's a line at the neck. I want everything inside that light blue on the head. It's a bigger target. It's a bigger target, all right? That pasty is your target. Okay. We are going to get to a point to where we're shooting a one inch grouping at five yards, okay? okay. So we're gonna start to dial this in. Everything into the head, 20 <laughs> yards, back here. Not sure where I'm shooting. I suck the yeah. first. I think the keyhole is your first shot. So it's two to the right. Do you see that? Yeah. It's in, but it's to the right. Yep. And then one right. I, I forgot. Oh. We got 30 minutes. Yeah. Let's do it. You guys want to shoot some steel? Yeah. We're gonna apply what we just taught on the pistol. Shoot some steel. Okay. All right. This is a warm up. Okay. This is and a suck it could be a warm up for a push up. Well, <laughs> this is going to kind of suck right? for me because I've got that turn tactical again, sight. Uh, yeah, sure you guys see this? Uh, it's to the right, so I have to find an adjustment point because that's how Taryn has it. So if I directly, directly aim at the steel, I'm going to miss. So I have to kind of aim to the left a little bit. And i got to kind of guesstimate that. So, well, let's give it a try. Basically, you come up to this line, you have one shot. You hit or you miss, all right? If you hit, you move on to the end of the line, the next person goes up, they hit, you keep doing this. If you miss, everybody else does 10 push-ups, but not you. Oh yeah. It's like right? the cookie thing in the boot camp. <clears throat> you eat the cookie, everybody else That's right. does the push-ups. <laughs> and then when you go to bed tonight, if you're the one that missed, you're gonna get a blanket party. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, sock, sock party. Yeah, you get one shot. Oh, so I go first? So, yeah. yeah, so we'll rotate through. He misses, we lost the fucking push up. Yep. All right, so here it goes. Trusting your teammate. All right. <laughs> Guys, it's not you. I'm going to miss on purpose so it does push ups. Yeah. <laughs> Building that trust in your teammates' abilities, right? Like, like yesterday with the offset him. barricades. He's ready to do push ups. No, you can trust your dude. Oh, he's got it. Nice. Next up. Go. Oh, okay. Yeah. <sighs> Impressive. <clears throat> nice and easy. Nice, nice. Yes, sir. Yo. This is this is a A group, I think. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have to move this line back, I think. Yeah. So everybody's gonna do push-ups. At one point, we have to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jake, Jake and the instructors do the push-ups. Oh, I'll do. I'll do them. We'll do them. We'll do them with you guys. Who are you yeah. talking to? They probably purposely do this so they can do push-ups. All right, Ty, nice and easy. Oh. 
Smooth trigger squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> All right, how do you, uh, oh, you want to go further back? Yeah, let's just do one more further. Okay. Because they're, they're pretty good. Nice. Nice. Uh, Gotta keep compensating a little to the left. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go, honey. Just watch. Like nice. you don't, you don't. Oh, 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 I'm pushing up the sweat. Ten. You got a little cocky. A little bit. Oh, that's bad. Nice works. Yeah, good Like even when he, he was actually squeezing kind of hard, but his gun didn't dip. Right. Let's go see here. Trigger breaks when you want it to. That's a problem. It needs to break on its own. That's all I can say. You got it, it. Shouldn't break when you want it to. Should surprise. You just keep pressing until it goes. There you go. Take your time. Nice, nice. you. Dead eye. Good catch. Hey, right, buddy. On its own, not when you want it to. You saw the nice. trigger, buddy. Take your time. Oh, you got that shit, bro. All right, guys, we just got down with the morning session of day three and did some really, really cool stuff. Move, shoot, and communicate on the other side of the steel range and did some pistol drills here, here in a bunch of different competitions that with Jim Foreman here with us. And uh, so tell us about what happened this morning and what we're gonna do later. And then I wanna talk about some cool stuff here. Uh, yeah, this morning we did some uh, live fire, mostly a pistol competition. We got back on the gun, worked on our trigger pull, and uh, skill was there so we could move on to some very uh, surgical shots that we had to make on steel. And then we did one-on-one uh, -on -one competitions, uh, punishment was push-ups, and at the end of it, it got pretty crazy. We started doing some sprints yeah. on some long, long shots. And you saved us at the end. You did, <laughs> on that last shot. Uh, yeah, you put some pressure on me. Yeah, yep, and uh, so that was really good, and I, I really, like, no matter how much I do it, it's you always learn something new. Always learn something new. And I, you know, on trigger press, I learned a couple little things new here. And now we're gonna go into the kill house. What are we gonna do there? So we worked up for two days, just doing some dry runs, doing some basic entries and some movement in there and uh, working with uh, teams. And now we have a new type of uh, weapon. It's just uh, shoots jelly balls. So it's gonna be, it's the first time I ever shot it. Okay. So it's gonna be great to go force on force with that. That sounds like a lot of fun. So yeah. I can't wait to do that. Now, I want to talk about Ferro Concepts. That's a company that you're affiliate with, you work with, and you've got some really cool stuff here. I know that sling is with you guys and this belt. Just tell us all about it, man. Yeah, Ferro Concepts makes uh, tactical gear and uh, we got quite a bit of stuff, uh, very innovative. So this is our bison belt. It's uh, $215 and it, has, it comes with an inner belt, which, it is very lightweight. I have it on me underneath my bison. Oh yeah, it's very and slim profile too. So that goes under your belt loops. Yep. And uh, usually I just wear this with my pants every day. And then we got the outer belt, which is uh, made with um, webbing and tegris, which is carbon fiber. And we cool. designed it with circles because it's easier to bend and manipulate and it doesn't uh, crack. And it's got the molly loops. So this one's uh, OD, OD green and I got on the multi-cam. What I noticed with this is slim profile, because you know, they're generally like this guy is very slim profile, very right. easy, very lightweight. And this too, because a lot of belts that I have, including the one that I have on right now, is a little bit thicker. Yep, yeah. it's thicker, it's thinner, and yeah. it's still strong. So that's what yeah. we like, we like lightweight, uh, durable gear. So color-wise, Ranger Green, multi-cam, do you guys, what, what else? Black, uh, Tiger Stripe, we got Desert Camo, we got, a couple of different types of uh, multi cam, cool. black multi cam as well. Cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to running this and see how this is. And I know you've been running it and it looks pretty solid. And a guy like your caliber, if you're telling me that this is what you're running, 
I'm just yeah. not gonna question it and run it myself because you know what you're doing. Uh, if you guys don't know what who he is, maybe you should just Google him. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's move on to the sling because I've, I had really multiple problems today with the MacBook sling that I was running. Nothing against MacBook sling, it just wasn't for me the way it was set up. And then I saw your sling from yep. Terra Concepts. So uh, this is the Slingster, it's uh, $60. It's an uh, awesome sling because there's no, as you can see, all the excess tucks into the sling. The shoulder strap, you can remove this whole thing and just do with the one inch. Uh, mm -hmm deal or you can slide it on and this also moves up and down so you could adjust it to your needs um, the cool thing about this it's a two-point but we got this most of the stuff is uh, metal a lot of things are plastic now this right here has this little tab as you can see and it slides up and down and it's very easy to manipulate so you can lengthen it yeah. or you can shorten it and stow your weapon so that is very easy to manipulate. That is the coolest thing I've seen on a sling. Like multiple slings I've right. tried, obviously seen. That is the easiest. I mean, look at this thing. That is yep. really, really cool. And then the teeth lock down. It's not going anywhere once you lock it. And, and this that's is just letting go. The material is pretty strong. You know. Yep. It's one inch webbing. Gotcha. That is cool. And, and you have what color option? So you got the little. So camo. again, we got the Air One Desert Cami. Same. We got seven colors. We got the OD Green, the black. Yeah. Uh, multi-cam, black multi-cam, and a couple tiger stripe options. Well, I'd love to run that too and see how I feel about that. And uh, it looks pretty promising too. I really like this, but that's about it. Well, Jim, I really appreciate you spending time with us here. Obviously teaching us a lot of cool things. And I'm looking forward to getting in there with you and see what you got up for us. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Let's do it, man. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.